Kings there. Media Day is happening on Monday. We'll be there in five days. You and I will be there at Golden One for Media Day. <laughs> yes, sir. And so we figured, why not start with the Kings today? And when I look at this roster and when I look at this organization, Monty McNair has truly put his stamp on this roster, right? You, you can look at it up and down and, and say to yourself, this is Monty's team. This is Monty's roster. And Zach Harper wrote about that uh, today in The Athletic, previewing the season by taking a look back at the offseason. And Zach, by the way, gave the Kings a B-plus on the season or the offseason. Uh, here's what he writes. After this offseason, should this front office be tied to the ills of management and ownership past? Harper answers his own question. No, it's impossible to completely separate from ownership, possibly changing plans midseason, which, of course, here in Sacramento is always a possibility. But if this season is a flop, it has nothing to do with Vladi Divac or Luke Walton, Dave Yeager, et cetera. Rami, I ask you this question because this is one of the questions that Zach had in his column today. Is this season on Monty? Do you put this season on Monty McNair as we get ready for media day on Monday and the season to tip off on October 19th? Can I still plead ignorance of being the new guy? Three months today, by the way, guys. Happy anniversary. Somebody asked Chris, me that today. They AJ, said because we were talking about how I'm I'm going on ten months in in Charles Watkins of the digital team couldn't believe that it's been you know going on ten months and he <laughs> so, was like how long's Rami been here I was like three months three months today everybody's like whoa three months yeah. today congratulations been, three thank month you. anniversary it's been a great three are we gonna today. do this every three months uh maybe maybe every month okay oh every month maybe every week I don't know why not just beat the dead horse that's just what I every, said just count it every day yeah just count it every day <laughs> habitual line stepper let's count the days we'll start every show with saying this is Rami's. I, I, X amount of shows today. I knew there was a roster overhaul this offseason and, so, yeah. and since I got here. I didn't realize it was as dramatic as what Zach laid out there in the article, that there's not now just three players left on this roster that were not brought here yeah. by Monty McNair. That's and that and that says a lot. And he's and he's right. He doesn't have the albatross of of past regimes decisions hanging around him and 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 sort of limiting what he can do. But that also means that he doesn't have he doesn't have anybody to point to and go, hey guys, I'm still trying to fix their mess. You know what I mean? Like right. that's that's not a thing anymore. He can't point to past mistakes of the Sacramento Kings and past regimes because now this is his squad. Now, when you ask the question that you just asked me, is this a make or break season for Monty's Kings? Yes, but that depends where you set the bar. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I don't even know if you can put it on wins and losses. You can put it on a play in spot or a playoff spot. I don't I don't know that we can go there yet. I just need to see that this thing is. You know what? I, it needs to pass the eye test of me watching and going. This thing is working. And I believe in the direction that it's headed in. I need to feel that way by the end of this season for me to believe in Monty McNair. Does that make sense? Yes. And, okay. and I think when you look at this roster, if you're going to judge Monty, and I do think this is on Monty now, this is mostly Monty's team, especially given the fact that the three players that Monty, you know, took from prior regimes, you're talking about De'Aaron Fox. I don't think anybody has complaints. Look, could, could he be, we'll talk about Fox later on in the show. Could mm -hmm. he be better? Absolutely. Could he be more consistent? No doubt about that. But I don't think anybody would complain about Fox as a basketball player just being on a team. He's, you know, he's a good player. He's a he's a top 50, 55 player in the NBA. So, you know, no complaints about that. Harrison Barnes is a valuable piece, a veteran guy who can help any team in the league. Rashawn Holmes, he's a, a good player at the five. He's, he's yes, he's a little old school, a little bit. But he he can at least chip in and play some good basketball for you. So the three components that are not Monty's components to this roster are good. It's not like you're stuck with some kind of albatross. So that's the first thing. Secondly, when you look at the bigger picture and, and what this team has done, you really start with the Sabonis trade. And Chris and JJ can correct me if I'm wrong because I had been here for like a month or two before that trade happened. But the way I read that deal was that was Monty's first significant imprint. Like that was his first, I'm putting my foot down. The Ty Halliburton draft pick, right? Drafting Tyrese, that was kind of, I don't want to say it was a layup 
a lot of people thought Hallie was going to be drafted before he got to the Kings. Mm -hmm. Hallie fell into the lap of McNair. So the Sabonis trade was McNair's first, I'm putting my neck out kind of move. And ever since then, you could say, yes, this is now on Monty. He brings in Sabonis. He drafts Keegan Murray. That's another one, Rami. You were just here for it. That was your first week of work here in Sacramento. And we talked about it leading up to that draft. Jaden Ivey or Keegan? Monty picked Keegan. So just those two decisions alone are going to help define this team in a major way. Absolutely. No no doubt about it. He's he's put his stamp on this team. So are you putting a number on it? Where are you saying that they need to make the play in? They need to make the playoff. How are you if it is a make or break year for you in terms of Monty McNair, how are you judging that? Is it the same as me where it's kind of eye test and do I believe in what I'm seeing? I don't think this is a make or break year for Monty. Oh, you don't? No, I think the season is on Monty. I think this is his team now, and I think whatever happens to this team this year is his responsibility. But I go back to what I said in the offseason. I'm going to stay consistent. I've said this this entire time. Yes, Monty, this is his roster. Whatever happens this year is on his record. It's on his resume. But with that said, he just brought in Mike Brown who is another piece of the puzzle and is his head coach. I'm not going to give him one year with his head coach and his roster. I don't think that's fair to him. So I don't think this is make or break if they don't, if they don't make the play and you fire Monty. But I do think the results are on Monty this year. If you believe they can grow and develop and get better and he can make another move that improves this team even further, then that's the conversation. So I don't think this is his career on the line, and I don't think it should be his career on the line. But if you asked me, is this season on Monty? Yes, because this is his basketball team. He put together this team. He made the Sabonis decision. He drafted Keegan. He decided to sign Malik Monk. He made the Kevin Herter trade. He went out there and hired Mike Brown. We were all worried about Vivek being a part of that process, and would Vivek make the call? We all know from reports that Mark Jackson was Vivek's guy. So mm-hmm. Mike Brown is Monty's guy. So, yeah, the season results, absolutely. You can no longer look at it and go, oh, yeah, but they would have been better if it wasn't for Vladi or if it wasn't for Luke Walton. Those days have passed. This is officially the Monty McNair era, and that should be on his resume. But you're giving him at least two years to show that he's 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 worthy of 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 leading this, this org, this organization, this franchise. Yes. Cause I I don't think you fire a guy after, you know, one season. Look, if they win 15 games and it's cataclysmic, we'll have the conversation then. I don't think that's going to happen aside from injury. So I, I just, I've said from the beginning, when you, when you hire Mike Brown and you give Monty the call on the head coach, you have to give those two guys together at least two years to see what they are. I don't think you fire Monty, bring somebody else in, or maybe you move up West Wilcott. I don't think you do that. I think you stick with Monty. But Monty doesn't have any cop-outs anymore is my point. He's not going to get bailed out. This roster is his roster. He made those significant decisions. So if this year does go bad, short-term, yes, he takes the hit. Long-term, I I don't think you pull the plug just yet. I didn't – I. and speaking of the play-in, I didn't think of it in this way until Zach framed it this way with Houston, Utah, OKC, and San Antonio all rebuilding. Basically, there are 11 teams battling for 10. There's going to be one. There's just going to be one team that's that's not going to have a chair to sit in when the music stops at the end of the regular season. Yep. Making the play in when you put it like that is a lot more realistic and doable than than I think most people thought. Before before I I saw it that way, you know what I mean? Yeah. So for him, if they're nowhere near the play in at the end of the season, then I'm going to have some serious doubts about whether or not this thing is headed in the right direction. That would be cataclysmic. And even if they're in the play in, but I'm like, ah, I, I mean, cool, but I don't really see this going anywhere. I don't see the arrow really pointing up. I could see a I could see Monty. Being done after just this year. All right, we want your thoughts. Is this Monty's team now? Do you consider this Monty's team? And, you know, does he have to do as much as Rami is saying in his in his first year as, like, you know, the official holder of this roster after making these moves the past few months? I got to see months? something to make me believe. That's not, all. 916-339-1140. Monty McNair. 
is the text line again, 916-339-1140. The number is 1-800-920-1140. Check us out, youtube.com, Sacktown Sports 1140. We'll get to your reaction on Monty and the Kings. Also in 90 seconds, is Jimmy G a 